just and, and yeah, they were talking about how the, the so structure of your social security ran and you know, they, he said it was viable for you know, many years and why industry at a certain point when they're making you know, it's like whether it's their individual people that they're not paying into social security you know are they going to have their own you know great pensions but somehow to make it equitable that that everybody pays into it yeah. and i don't think it is now and then how much money was left in the health care that oh i, I think it, a lot of them are total you know scare tactics too when they have sure. social security and, and uh, you know their medical funding um, there's something that has to be done but it's yeah oh. there's many of us it's like you know that won't have anything except social security because many jobs don't offer pensions or don't, you know, it's like in part of well, that's what it's turning out. Well, that's what it is. That's what it's going to be. Well, the life expectancy is rising, which it's a great thing to have that. Um, security. And not only that, but it's like if we, if we don't have security. Piggybacking on that, uh, I know through current projections, like our generation won't have Social Security, and I don't feel that a lot of people in Congress are really addressing that. Um, it, it, I mean, just ba based on the rate that uh, that the, you know the deficit's increasing, and, and such that we, uh, like my generation just won't have it. So I guess I would like to see more uh, words on how that would get addressed. I yeah, and I'd like to understand banking systems more where these international monetary funds are working. It's like, you know, who is in debt to who and why is that? It's like, uh, you know, it's like, oh my God, fiscal policy 101 in DC. Well, what I'm hearing kind of as a nutshell of the whole thing is people want more responsibility, accountability, and deliver, better deliver. Thank you. 
independent voter and student at the University of Minnesota Duluth. Um, I'm definitely curious about hearing, there's a number of issues that I have deep concerns about, but um, you know, having gone to a couple of the events for the different candidates, uh, I would like to know more about um, your feelings on public safety as well as the opioid uh, epidemic, and then also uh, how you plan to tackle things like social security. And infrastructure as well. And who do you bring to the space? Who do I bring? Yeah. So what motivated you? Oh, just 
I really I like getting involved in the local politics. So I thought, me especially you know, kind of in recent events, you know, recent elections, you know, getting more involved at the local level, and uh, I think it's I don't know, it's been a really cool experience, kind of seeing a lot of the different candidates. So. It's like a personal mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I was also involved at the congressional forum, so I, I thought that was really cool. So I thought I'd do some more. So. <laughs>
born and raised in Duluth. Moved up here about 10 years ago. Uh, work for uh, Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Uh, so we have uh, an office here, so that brought me up here. Uh, I'm married, I have uh, two kids. Uh, so obviously, the like, cost of childcare is definitely a concern. Uh, you know, it is just something where it, it's hard to even find a, a job that offsets the, the cost that you would have to, like, to do childcare. Thank you. 
considered nonprofit. And I remember talking to my catch about this one time too, and it dealt with Blue Cross Blue Shield, but probably all the same. At the end of the year, they've got money in there, so what do they do? Go try to buy a private jet? You know, it's like, you know, where are these costs going? And another thing that it's like through the years, the highest paid people are paying less percentage in taxes. That you know, should change. I mean, Eisenhower during you know, his time, it's like companies paid a high amount of taxes. And another thing with mining, when they have uh, environmental fines, are those tax deductible? So it's like, do they care? It's part of their budget. It's part of a cost. I, I've wondered about that all the time, and it's like, it, I forgot to you know, times ask you know, Congressman Nolan, but it's like, I wonder about all these things. And worldwide, our it's like nation is trying to do things. My brother-in-law was just in Italy. He is PhD at MIT, developing filters for environmental services, uh, emissions, car emissions, industrial emissions. They are trying, but they're, it was like, and I said it, it why can't you? Know, like if the biggest polluter are cars. They could run 60, 80 miles a gallon, but the oil companies are right, right in there, you know, keeping that research down. Well, it's, it's just, it's pathetically sickening. Well, so what are, I mean, what are some things that we could actually do? You know, Try I mean, to get honesty in government and honesty, it's like from oil companies and research to make these and, and force them to say, it's like, we're gonna get these cars within 60, 80 miles per gallon. They can go out of the moon, cut NASA, an make them get a car that runs right. I swear to God, it's like, you know, what good is it going to the moon? We can't even, you know, fix our environmental problems right here. Let's put that up. <laughs> so actually, NASA's involved with the environment. Yeah. We cut them off. Well, ground them for a while. <laughs> Something that wasn't mentioned, but I sure think I would with my kids, is that uh, wages have been stagnant. And the, a lot of the companies are making lots of money. And it mostly goes to the top. I know where a couple of my kids work, and they're making, you know, whatever they're making is the, the profits, and they keep them all on top. Blue Cross, you know, the, the CEO makes a whole lot more than millions. Could be, a lot of that could be changed by that.
something. Because if, if they raise the price of the, the gas tax, we would get something for it. Absolutely. And, you know, I think tying right into that infrastructure, which you yeah. brought up as well, uh, can the federal government play a different role than it has been? What could we be doing to do a better job of getting uh, or helping communities um, equitably, whether they're a Duluth or a North Branch? Or really, the old alternate, they used to tax tires. <coughs> As a luxury tax, actually, I think it was. That was World War II. Though. I understand it, but if gas price, if gas consumption is going down, and Tires, you know, we were in a tire, a tire for 200,000 miles or whatever the number of miles on it. Uh, you have to replace it. A fair tax would be something that you're needing. It's beating up the roads. Or purchase our lottery money. Yeah, the lottery lottery lottery. environment and education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Lottery is more state specific. Yeah, yeah. And usually yeah. what happens is yeah. that just changes the tax structure within the tax expenditures.
Uh, this kind of deals with a couple of the issues that we've talked about thus far. Uh, as a student at UD, uh, I've noticed, first of all, I love the city of Duluth and I love being here. Um, and I've, I felt like if I'm able to find a job, I would really love to live here. But I also know in my field it's really difficult to find a job up here. And just thinking about, you know, this situation that is Duluth, you know, it's perfectly situated on, you know, it, it already has a lot of natural infrastructure, natural ports that, you know, it's, it's a haven for industry. But what I've, what I've noticed in talking to a lot of people, you know, kind of seeing how the demographic shift in Duluth, you know, has been really exacerbated. You know, a lot of the community is, is shrinking, you know, population's lowering, a lot of the infrastructure, you know, even housing is getting, you know, older and you know, more broken down. So I'm curious, and I've talked to, you know, a lot of people that I've worked with, as well as um, kind of uh, 
other local business people that I'm interacting with, uh, what I've what I've heard is that like say in the city of Duluth, it's really uh, expensive or difficult. There's a lot of loopholes that you have to jump through to start a business or to or to you know get. There's a high barrier of entry to get a business going in Duluth. Uh, and feeling, I, I just want to know how you feel about, you know, if, if we were to somehow figure out a way to lower those barriers of entry, to encourage more uh, entrepreneurs to come into the area, uh, which would drive up competition, lowering, uh, you know, basic, you know, uh, uh, prices on, on a lot of basic things, you know, even think something like childcare, you know, getting an influx of, you know, people means more people need done. You know, childcare, which means more people are going to come to to serve that market, lowering prices for everybody. I guess, how do you feel about um, kind of lowering lowering those barriers of entry for your entrepreneurs? I think we got to keep an open mind to all good ideas that essentially enables people to um, get a good shot at making it on their own. If they're trying to do a small startup, uh, we met with lots of younger families who don't feel right now that we have shared their stories. Of I had an idea, but the market seemed really hard to get into. Um, and so I'd definitely be open to ideas. Do you have any suggestions on? Well, I know that building codes are pretty strict here, in, 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 well, in the Duluth area, from, from what I've heard. Granted, I've never built a building in Duluth, so I wouldn't know. Uh, in particular, but I know that you know if if that were to if it, somehow those um, ordinance would ordinances would be relaxed in some in some way, allowing uh, more companies to come in uh, more more easily to develop the land that's already here. Um, especially a lot of this old, older infrastructure that with a little bit of upkeep could could keep running. Um, so I guess that's a few thoughts of mine, but it's kind of more at the city level as well too. So. Yeah, I think we more about that and how yeah. I just want to be respectful of people's time. And I do just one thing. Uh, a lot of people mentioned retirement. Uh, Linda, you haven't spoken, and you actually mentioned pensions uh, through your, I believe your letter career job. UPS. UPS. Games. Games or news here? No, no. No, no. No, I was the Okay. The drivers are teams. Drivers? Okay. I did a team steer at the end. Well, they had their and then, pensions. And they had a real pension. Yes, and something should be done there too. It's like even when LTV and Cleveland Cliffs closed in you know, 2001, how many of those people lost their pensions? That should just totally be illegal and, and uh, share it a moment with the stockholders. It's like they walk away, they have a plan. It's like you know, Lynn was one of them with LTV. It's like uh, they come in, they, they know exactly what they're doing, and they pull the stock. They're so, you know, so many of these companies are diversified. They're not just mining. It seems like there's many other industries involved, and with the stock and with the pensions. Well, LTV in specific, we have heard from um, some of the workers who said, you know, we paid in our fair share on this, yes. and then the company didn't fulfill their end of the bargain. Great. And you know, some the ideas that they threw out were essentially holding people accountable when they're running a bigger business like that and making those commitments putting in that uh, assurance in advance and not being able to go bankrupt on those obligations. You, you could do that by reforming the uh, pension laws, but also by reforming bankruptcy. Yes, because the employees are always last in line at bankruptcy. I think the pensions are pretty far along in the end of the line, too. Mm -hmm. We moved here right after LTV closed, and one of the first things I did was I used to interview people that had lost their health insurance. That was before uh, the ACA or anything. Five years old and they lost their health insurance and they were completely screwed until they turned 65 and got Medicare and they were just yeah yeah the prices are exorbitant but again that's something that could be changed the pension issue could be changed by performing federal law and well we all get universal health care it won't be such an issue easy I, I guess one one subject that wasn't mentioned here at our table was nursing for the elderly. Uh, when, when I took that time off for real estate, I was a receptionist at a nursing home, and, and I have great love for these people. 
to and the low pay for, for the jobs, the women's jobs here, the CNAs, the, you know, the yeah. LPNs even. They're backbreaking jobs. I worked through rate center. Yeah. It was, it's like, They're for what you do, it's, they it's really terrible. Yeah. All the professions, actually, I heard last night at the meeting was uh, with the highest amount of back increase. Oh, yeah, yeah. back. Yeah. It, absolutely. Right. Low pay, and they keep you low, and even with the unions there, that it's low pay. So it's like, where's all but the money? But it's a major going? concern to me. And why? There again, you know, it's like high paid administrators. Well, it's, it's, it's the medical. And the medical, yes. And the drugs. Yes, that too. And so we're gonna, so we're gonna stay for a while after this. Yes. Uh, and we're gonna talk one-on-one -on -one with you, Jason's gonna have time. Each of you will have time if you wanna ask Jason a specific question. This is the point where I'm gonna let Jason kind of wrap up what all he heard, so that we make sure that we're all on the same page as far as what we can put this throughout the course, okay? Yeah, no, uh, I think this is, uh, Essentially, important to get out here. These things, bankruptcy, and I have to get yeah. yeah. as far as uh, we have to look at that. Like, that's a really good idea to look into. Um, that's federal law. That's yep. That's yeah. Absolutely. Yes. We there just is. dealt with a, a very complex bankruptcy case, and I learned a lot about it, but not on a um, individual, super detailed level, but with the SR situation over yeah. in that one, and how that goes out. It's a very complicated thing, but I think it has room for improvement. That's that that maybe an area to look into. And so we're hearing, you know, healthcare is probably the number one issue yeah. that we're dealing with in terms of the conversations we've been having. I have with small business owners uh, in town earlier today. People that I would typically think might not support uh, too many huge changes, but they said just the cost of their business operating. The increase in uh, revenue and profits that they're getting, even with the new uh, proposed tax cuts, won't make up for the costs of the health care increases that they're uh, having on an individual level. If they've got an individual plan or some larger businesses on their company plan, and it's not enabling them to make uh, the wages that they would like to for their workers, uh, for other people, and so they were very adamant about tackling that. Education uh, has been something else that has been just recurring over and over and over again. We've had uh, a lot of the younger people at some of the other meetings we've been at who came in and said, I graduated from school with a mortgage, and there's no jobs out there that have the ability to pay it back. So I, I really think what we've been asked is to, to look into finding ways to make it way more affordable than it is right now. The example I usually give is my wife. I know firsthand from her going to McAllister, graduating with about $100,000 in debt, and that was more than our mortgage when we got married. And now after uh, we get through kind of these conversations, we're really looking forward to tying in some of the solutions you threw out today ways that we go out and be effective and find the change that folks are looking for on the issues. And I think the job opportunities would be, um, you know, that, that they all close on. And that's uh, one thing that people really need, whether you're in Duluth, uh, to diversify the economy there, to diversify the economy up here. And one of the things I'm proud of is I've always fought really hard for projects like Elliott to come in in the Mount Iron going bankrupt all over the country. We found a way and I worked across the aisle with my colleagues there to get some funding so that we could retool the solar plant in Mount Iron. And it sounds like they'll be hiring um, up to about 100 people over the course of the summer and into next year. We don't get things such as broadband in the area. Companies are not going to come. Yep. And if there has to be an enticement for the companies to come. We want a job to follow, but the company's got to start. I work on. What, what, what is it? What is it? Solar. Solar, is it solar? solar panel manufacturing. Oh. And so we need to continue to get the resources to communities that they need to thrive on their own. And I think um, broadband, Alan, huge. I worked on that bill when it first came, and we have so many. That just need to get connected. So it's that easy access. and it's cheap. It's cheap. Compared to healthcare, it's you know you can get better healthcare if you have broadband because then 
people could talk to each other easier. <clears throat> and another thing is, not broadband, but all the, our nation is becoming a nation of part-time jobs. Why can it not be that every part-time job is prorated for your pension, for your vacation? You know, it's like, so it's like, you know, possibly, you know, it's like get rid of them or combine them or do something because it's just not great. It's like, you know, and, uh, you know, part-time people often work harder than the full-time people. I've seen it many a time. And you think, you know, you know, not to have time off or you're going from one job to another. And, uh, it, yeah, we, we need it. In, in the United States, we don't use our vacation. And we should have, it's like, you know, decent time off because stress kills. One, one of the things we're really trying to do with this group of meetings, like uh, Greg said in the intro, we have one left uh, coming up. And we're going to get back to everyone here. So if you got a chance to sign in, we will get back and let you know. We want to listen to people throughout this district and incorporate what they're concerned about into our campaign and our platform so we could build something based on the shared values of people from every nook and cranny of the district that we really thought represented the eighth and that we could take not only through our election in November and but out into Washington and try to make a difference on all those issues that people have been bringing up at all these meetings. So I think we'll stick around here and if there's uh, stuff you want to talk about, more than happy to. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah. <laughs>